gentlemen, from the beautiful Thunderbird in Miami Beach, in the world-famous powwow room, the management is pleased to present the King of the Thunderbirds. Oh, what did you say? What the you... King of the Thunderbirds. I'm so glad you didn't say Queen. There's been a lot of talk. <laughs> Known in show business as the undernourished comic, a very skinny fellow. Let's welcome him, sensational Frankie Scott. <laughs> Enough of that. Yes, I am undernourished, friends, and may I say publicly, it's a pleasure to see such a big crowd here tonight. <laughs> you should have been here last night. Somebody should have been here last night. <laughs> we had an overflowing crowd. The sewer backed up. <laughs> it's very embarrassing to be thin and undernourished. But if I want to say publicly, if you think I look bad now, you should see me in a pair of jockey shorts. <laughs> I look like a pair of pliers with a band-aid. <laughs> now they call me the undernourished comic, and the reason is because I am so thin. They call me the undernourished comic, and all you see is nose and chin. When I was in the army, I had a job to do. I used to clean the cannons. All they did was pull me through. Call me the undernourished comic. It's because I am a so thin. This very attractive woman uh, directly in front of me. What's your first name, my dear? What is it, dear? Dorothy. Can you see me all right, Dorothy? Are you sure? Should I put the microphone on the side? You've heard of Big Bad John from Tucson. I'm the total loss from Holy Cross. <laughs> Gentlemen, directly in front of me, don't sit like that with your legs crossed, sir. Open up, let the air go through your shorts. It's a beautiful audience tonight, and I want to do a good job tonight, friends, because there are, there happens to be some big people here tonight. Directly in front of me is Bob, a new car salesman. Bob, how you feel tonight? Good, good, good. Bob sells new cars. He told me last week, he says, Frankie, why don't you get a brand new car? Up your horsepower. <laughs> Then he took me to his showroom, and his salesman came over, and they said the same thing. Frankie, get a new car. Up your horsepower. I says, Robert, how much is a new car? He told me the price. I said the same thing to him. Up your horsepower. I see a couple of young people sitting over here. What is your first name, sir? Oliver. Hi. Oliver? I think he's one of us. <laughs> Be proud, Oliver. Someday we're going to rule the world. Is this young lady with you? Is this your wife? Are you here on a business trip? Oh, wonderful. What is your first name, my dear? Wanda. Wanda and Oliver. And your honeymoon is by any chance? I, you know how I can tell? You would never believe this, Oliver. I can tell by the pajamas under your pants. <laughs> nice honeymoon is sitting over here, folks. It's nice to see you up and around again. <laughs> and some a man over here. What is your first name, sir? John. John. Nice to meet you, John. Say hello to Oliver. Oliver, say hello to John. Wanda, say hello to John. No broad at all? What happened? The cab driver give you a bum steer? <laughs> I'll get you a broad. Let me see. Here's a young lady over here. Are you all by yourself, my dear? What is your first name, my dear? Gwendolyn. Gwendolyn. Say hello to John. John, say hello to Gwendolyn. Hi. Is that the way you say hello to a woman? No wonder you haven't got a broad. You got pimples all over your face. <laughs> Gwendolyn, say hello to John. Say hello to John. John's a big man here. We named a room after him. <laughs> right, John? Uh, waitress, would you bring Gwendolyn a drink and charge it to John over here? You're a beautiful woman, Gwendolyn. Where are you from, my dear? From England, God love you. First time you've been here in this country? Yes. First time here in Miami? Yes. First time. This town has got nothing but sin. <laughs> Booze, broad, sex, faggots. <laughs> My kind of town. <laughs> I'm going to give you a hell of a show tonight, folks. I'm in a good mood. I was sick all day today. You would never believe it. Dorothy, you would never believe it. I was so sick. 
I had some tuna fish. And I think they took Charlie. <laughs> Did you ever see that commercial, sir? This man over here, I don't want to upset you, sir, but the hair on your nose is on fire. <laughs> what is your first name, sir? Cecil. Cecil? Cecil? Yes. Say hello to Oliver. Oliver, say hello to Cecil. <laughs> Cecil, Oliver, after the show, we'll work something out. <laughs> Are you a married man, Cecil? Yes. Is this your lovely wife over here? Yes. What is your first name, this young lady here with her hernia earrings? <laughs> Angie. Is that Italian, darling? Yes. Oh, that's wonderful. That's what I am. I'm a Yiddish Chilena. I'm half Jewish and half Italian. I'm what you call a lit wop. Which, incidentally, there's a restaurant right down the street over here. They serve Jewish and Italian food. It's fantastic. They serve various foods such as... Uh, uh, spaghetti and matzo balls. <laughs> Did you ever have that, Angie? No. Spaghetti and, they have long spaghetti. They tie matzo balls at the end. <laughs> they serve them as hot yo-yos. <laughs> and they're friendly. Have you ever been there, John? Oh, they're friendly. I, worked, I walked in one day. I said, do you serve crabs? They said, sit down. Nobody will notice you. <laughs> it's a pleasure to see nice people like this. Cecil over here with Angie. Are you, how long have you been married, folks? Fifteen years. Fifteen years. God love you. And you get along beautiful together, don't you? Yeah, yeah. Do you have any children at all, Cecil? Eight. How many, sir? Eight. Eight children. <laughs> don't you have any other hobbies? <laughs> <laughs> Friends, I want you to meet Cecil the sex maniac. <laughs> Cecil, would you take a little bit of advice from me? Eight children in fifteen years. Take a tip from me, sir. When you wake up... Get up. <laughs> Angie, I don't want to upset you, but when you walked in here tonight, the whole orchestra went berserk. <laughs> and I hate to say this, especially in front of Gwendolyn. You know what a big mouth she's got. <laughs> because you're so beautiful, Angie. So gorgeous. So luscious. One of the biggest luscious I've ever seen. <laughs> Piano player is nuts about you. <laughs> look at him, 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 look, 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 look. Don't make it obvious, just look at him, look at him, look at him, look at him. If Moses ever saw him, he would have added another commandment. He's nuts about you, and the drummer is furious because he's nuts about the piano player. John. When you talk to Gwendolyn over here, that's a beautiful young lady. That's not chopped liver. <laughs> look at the built on that woman. Look at that. Look at that. She's got a bad cold. Her chest is all swelled up. <laughs> Don't be embarrassed, Gwendolyn. Cecil, am I right? Look at her. You're sitting next to her. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. John, look at that. What are you, a vegetarian? <laughs> it's a pleasure to see a woman sitting directly in front of me with a beautiful figure who's not embarrassed. Gwendolyn, you're not embarrassed, are you, darling? God love you, dear. My wife is so skinny, her falsies wear falsies. <laughs> Every night when she stacks them up, they look like Dixie cups. <laughs> but not you, my dear. God love you. If we ever have a flood in this town, you'll never drown. <laughs> May I say publicly, folks, this is a phony business. Yes, I've been working here at the Thunderbird for 10 years. And many people say to me, Frankie, you must own the motel. No, folks. My check is so small, you can cash it on the bus. <laughs> this is a phony business. And talking about a bus, have you ever taken a bus in Chicago? I took a bus one day in Chicago. I told the bus driver, I said, you go to the loop? He says, no, I go beep beep. <laughs> have you ever been there, Cecil? No. I'm driving a sports car. I got a ticket. Did you ever drive a sports car, uh, Oliver? Have you ever driven a sports car? No. Never have. They're very light, you know. It took me 45 minutes to get out of the garage. I was stuck on a piece of gum. I got a ticket. You would never believe this, but day before yesterday, I'm driving down, I'm driving down Main Street. The damn car is so low, I got a ticket. I put my left hand out to make a turn, and I ruptured a cop. <laughs> I 
got him right at the intersection. <laughs> Cecil, Cecil, I felt like I was taking the law in my own hand. <laughs> I'm going to do everything tonight, folks. I want to taste eight. I'm going to do so many things tonight, but first of all, I want to sing a little song here to Gwendolyn. Gwendolyn, you're very attractive, my dear. Would you come over here a second, please? And I want to sing a little song to you. You don't mind, do you, John? You don't mind, do you, John? You can always end up with Oliver over there. Get a little close to me, darling. That's it, my dear. And don't be afraid, my dear. I'm a very old man. I look young, but I'm old. I'm so old. I'm at the age now that when a girl says no, I'm grateful. I need a cigarette for this, folks, because I'm very nervous. Gentlemen, some man out there, so, uh, uh, would you give me a cigarette, please? Hey, would you light it for me, please? Thank you, sir. Work fast, I have to go in the kitchen and clean some chickens. <laughs> oh, I have sidelines here. I have many sidelines. I have to clean chickens, which I don't mind. We have a modern way of cleaning chickens, a new type of a shaver. You've heard of a mini chick and a lady chick? We have the chicken chick. You know this audience is way ahead of me? This is not all I do for a living here. I buy the cars. Yes, sir, I made 2,000 of the bus talking about cars. I saw the bus on the And you know me when I don't even draw a word about a thing. Because I want to say something. There's a new spot that opened up here in town called Kitty City. Kitty City. It's a cat house for little leaguers. <laughs> Thank you, sir, for your cigarette. You lit it for me, and it's beautiful. You're all right, aren't you? Yeah. Okay. Then. Oh, this is that menthol cigarette. I can't stand these menthol cigarettes. They taste like Vicks wrapped up in toilet paper. <laughs> Getting very high. Did you ever hear that story about the fellow that was leaving New York to come to Miami Beach, a nervous wreck? His buddy says, Here, take one of those crazy cigarettes. He lit it, took a few drags, he started feeling very high, went to the pilot, he says, Pilot, oh, how high are we? Pilot says, We are. Now 32,000 feet in the air. He says, really? He says, how fast are we going? Oh, pilot says 700 miles an hour. He said, you want to race? <laughs> Which reminds me of the joke about the two fellas. They were two cannibals that were having dinner. One cannibal turned around to the other cannibal and says, You know, I can't stand your brother-in-law. The other cannibal says, Okay then, just eat the noodles. <laughs> How about the one about the elephant that walked into a synagogue? An elephant walked into a synagogue right up to the rabbi. The rabbi looked at the elephant and said, What are you doing here? The elephant looks at the rabbi and says, where do you want me to go with this nose? To church? <laughs> May I continue by singing this song to you, Gwendolyn? Fly me to the moon. Put your arm around me, darling. <laughs> Both arms. That's it. Just help yourself. <laughs> You know, I'm having so much fun, I think I'll pay the minimum. <laughs> and let me play among the stars. Let me see what love is like on Jupiter and Mars. Are you staying here, dear, at this motel? You are, darling? Isn't this a wonderful place? It is. This is a family motel. Everybody's your wife. I want to say there's many hotels and motels 
but nothing's greater than here. Three o'clock in the morning, they knock on your door. You got a bra in your room? I said, yes, it's okay. You want to make sure you're not a queer. <laughs> Today, I called down and says, hey, I got a leak in my bathtub. They says, go ahead. We don't give a damn. <laughs> but the walls, the walls, the walls are so thin. Are you staying here, Cecil? Yes. How about the honeymooners? Are you staying here, Oliver? Oh, the walls are so thin that last night, you would never believe it. The woman that had the room next door to me must have loved candy bars. <laughs> All night she kept saying, Oh, Henry! Oh, Henry! <laughs> and me lying there with a powerhouse. <laughs> Cecil was there with his Tootsie Roll. <laughs> Oliver, you should have brought your old nickel along. <laughs> In other words, hold my hand. Take a number from one to ten, my darling. Seven. What? Seven. Seven, you lose. Take off your clothes. <laughs> In other words, kiss me, darling. You know it's embarrassing to be thin like this. I was up in the solarium sunbathing in the nude. Two vultures passed over me. One turned around to the other one and says, Look, somebody beat us to it. <laughs> I went into some bar last night. You would never believe it. It was ridiculous. In one corner, two guys were holding hands. In another corner, two guys were kissing. <laughs> I told the guy I was dancing with, let's get the hell out of here. <laughs> May I have your hand, darling? You don't mind if I kiss you on your hand, do you, dear? Thank you, darling. <laughs> In other words... <laughs> oh, my darling. Do I do anything at all for you? Yes. I think I'm doing more for Cecil over here. <laughs> Cecil, you have no fear, Cecil. I couldn't get hot with you if we were cremated together. <laughs> and Oliver, you're about as sexy as a Spanish olive with his pimento hanging out. <laughs> oh, my darling. Please don't fear. You need not worry. For I am queer. Well, fly me to the moon and let me play among the stars. Let me see what love is like on Jupiter and Mars. In other words, oh my. Words. Kiss me, darling.